Hey everybody, come on in. It's Thursday evening and I am in the kitchen, of course, getting ready to prepare just a, one of these really quick meals again, y'all. So what I'm doing here today, hope y'all have a God blessed Thursday afternoon too. Uh, hope y'all got the holiday season down pat by now. Everything's about at the halfway mark almost. Uh, as far as shopping and all, even though we got three weeks, we need to be at the halfway mark because, you know, after we go shopping, then we got to wrap those gifts. We got to get them labeled. We got to go to the mailbox. So we need to be at the halfway mark right, right long and now. So anywho, y'all, I want to fix something uh, real quick uh, and something easy. Uh, as you can see, I've got rice in that pot. That is basmati rice. Uh, my plan with this is something new. I'm going to treat it like heat rice pilaf, and what I've already done is put some butter in the pan. I let it brown a little bit first, and then I put the butter in, and what I'm going to do is go ahead after that, and I'm going to put in my seasonings. I'm going to pour some, I'm going to use chicken broth. I'm just making one cup uh, just for Kareem and I, so I've got the brown uh, butter in there. i got my, a cup of basmati rice, a half a stick of, a half of, a fourth of a stick rather, of uh, butter and now I'm going to put a teaspoon of my everything but the kitchen sink seasoning in there a teaspoon of that then I'm going to put me a half a teaspoon of jerk seasoning this is going to be seasoned rice by the way y'all put a little punch to it okay and I'm just going to stir it around my cup so I'm treating it like pilaf, rice pilaf don't ask me why. I just y'all know. I just want to put a little spin on it, make it a little extra special, something different than just regular rice. And I'm gonna be adding some more butter to it as well. And uh, the other thing that I'm gonna put in is I've got my little uh, packets of uh, chicken bouillon seasoning. I'm gonna put a, a half a pack of that in there. I don't want to get too much of the salt flavor. In there. So I'm, gonna, I'm just putting everything in, put about a half of a pack of that in there. Okay, because we got to put some uh, chicken broth in there. Okay, get this turned up on high. Mm, it smells good. I've never cooked the basmati rice. My neighbor purchased a bunch of it and she gave me some to try, so I'm trying it. She said it's really, really very good, so I want to make sure. Not only that, it's just good on its own, but I want to put enough seasoning in there so it is really, really, really good. So let me get another little bit of butter. Um, whew, going. Let's put uh, about another tablespoon of butter in there. And I think it will be good for butter. And then I'm going to put some chicken broth in there. I'm going to put the lid on it, and I'm going to steam it just like I would, you know, any other way. Okay. Get that butter going. So what have y'all been doing today? I'm going to tell y'all about my day just shortly. I'll tell you what. You never know what's going to happen during the course of a day, at least not in my life anyway. Okay, so today was my day. Uh, this is where I get a lot of little shopping. I was going to do me a little, uh, how do y'all call it, you know, those of us YouTubers who go shopping and, and do our haul, that's what it is. But I don't think I'm going to do my haul because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to do it, especially on this video. I want to go and get me something to eat there because I didn't eat a lot today because I had a lot of little learning to do. And anyway, I had a doctor's appointment today. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm pouring a 14 and a half ounce can of chicken broth low sodium chicken broth, okay? We just pour it right in there. Y'all know I'm short cutting. I'm pulling it right out of the pan. can. And I'm going to let it start to boil. And then I'm going to lower the heat, put the lid on it. I have no directions for this basmati rice. I'm cooking it like I just cook regular rice. I'm going to make it work one way or the other. So anyway, when the uh, rice, in my mind, when all that rice, um, soaks up all those juices. It's going to be the best rice that anybody ever tasted in their life. So, this is this is our rice. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to get our um, I'm going to just do some 
fried uh, green beans with onions. Something real, like I said, it's got to be simple and easy. But this is like one of those in and out things that I got to get done here. Okay, so we're going to let that go ahead and start to boil. <clears throat> and then once it starts boiling real good, like I said, I'm going to lower the heat. And then I will uh, put the lid on. Okay. We're going to switch burners here. So I can get my green beans going. Okay. I am truly the, uh, supposed to be the one arm bandit. It's not working out. You know, when you don't have the use of your limbs, I'm not supposed that hand that reached over there like that, I'm not supposed to use my left hand today. I can, I can use it tomorrow. Okay, so what happened? Okay, let's go ahead and get the green beans on. And then I'm going to stop because I'm going to do the green beans, the basmati rice, some fried shrimp, and then some baked salmon. Okay, so some broiled salmon. So I'm going to get my oven turned on for my salmon. I'm going to turn it on high. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in the pan. So let's start the process. About a half of a medium onion. And then some of those flavors to the surface first before I put the green beans. These are just regular old canned green beans. Okay, my rice is to a great bowl. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it and it's just going to simmer for about 15 minutes. And then this meal, this is one of those 30 minute meals, y'all. Okay, so now let's get back to my day. And the doctor before I meant to get, I had a cyst on my left arm that's been there for years. It's just like a little nodule on there, and I never, I don't even know if I ever mentioned it or not. You know, I'm not, I don't get a job at times. So if I got something going on, it's going on, and you know, sometimes I share, sometimes I don't. But anyway, I'll share this, and I'll tell you why I'm sharing it as soon as I get into it. So anyway, I had an appointment. I tend to get these little sticks here and there, so that's what it was. So I had an appointment to have it removed today. I went, I did it, and little did I know it was going to turn into, I won't say major, nothing major, major, but it, was, it turned into more than I anticipated, even the doctor, for that matter, because we didn't know before it happened that it was going to happen that way. This nodule probably was about as big as, you know, you take your little fingers and put the tip of your little fingers, look like that, you know, one of those little assists that you get under the skin, and, uh, I guess it's probably been there six, seven years, maybe. Kylie always, every time she, you know how kids do that, she, that was her little thing. She rubbed it. Ooh, gee, can I take that off? No, girl. So anyway, uh, her little playmate's gone now. So anyway, the doctor began to take it off, and she realized that it was deeper than what she realized. Or I didn't even realize it. Was deep. So needless to say, what I thought was going to be just a little half-inch slit you know, take it out, remove it like I've had cysts moved before. And if any of you have, you know what I'm saying. A cyst is no big deal when it's small like that. So anywho, it's much bigger. When I walked out of there, I had almost a two-inch cut on my arm because it went deeper. Um, of course, it had to use a little bit more anesthesia. So needless to say, when it wears off, my arm is going to come alive. So that's why I got a hood get this meal done. I, I will not be deceived. I'm going to eat this. And the reason I'm going ahead and cooking the meal, okay, put the green beans in on top of the onion, y'all. I'm going to put in some, uh, everything but the chicken sink seasoning on top. Okay. And I got some of that ham flavor seasoning over here to the side. I'm going to put in a little half sack of that in there. Okay. Stir it around a little bit. And y'all know I'm going to put about a teaspoon or two of uh, brown sugar. Cover them and just let them simmer. Okay. Of course, I got to put some butter. Okay, some of the butter. See how simple this is? I mean, this is no... No real long drawn out big deal thing to do because this stuff is going to be done. This food is going to be done in about less than 30 minutes. Okay, 
All right, so my rice is cooking nicely. Now I'm gonna put a lid, put the brown sugar on that, and put the lid on, hang on this, put it right back. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to get this meal going because I got to get out of here because in three hours, she told me about three to four hours, the fill was going to come back in my arm. I just put in my two tablespoons of, uh, well, a tablespoon, about a tablespoon, a tablespoon of brown sugar. We're going to let them just cook and simmer. I'm going to cover them, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to do the fish and the shrimp, which won't take that long. But anyway, I say, I'm saying all that to say this about uh, things with you. Pay attention to your body. No, look, I had the use of both of my arms when I got up this morning, left up to the point where I got to the doctor's office. So now I can only use my right hand. So I'm adapting. We have to learn how to adapt to things that happen in life. We can't ball up in a corner and cry and whine about it. Look, I knew that I had to prepare some food, so I didn't want to go out and y'all know how I've told y'all I don't like eating out a whole lot. And plus I had to take my shrimp out, so I had to go ahead and cook it. So I've got about two more hours before I'm going to have to sit down somewhere and take my towel off because the filling is going to come back in. So just pay attention to your body. Uh, I should have, in, in other words, I should have had that slit removed a long time ago. But what it had time to do over five, I think five or six years, it took um, the opportunity to go deeper into my arm because um, when it started out, it was just this little old thing. And then I, over time, it started to, it was never hurting or anything like that. It was just something that I was, you know, pick with, you know, always touching it. And Kylie was always touching it. And I know that over time, it grew deeper into my arm. And of course, the doctor told me, you know, it was um, it was benign. Of course, they have to send it off to the lab and all that good stuff. But pay attention to your body. If you get anything, little things going on, go ahead and have it taken care of right away. Don't be waiting around like I did, you know? Because sometimes you make bad matters worse. So, lesson learned in my situation is not to, you know, ignore things when they happen to you in other words so guys take care of your bodies go to the doctor make your doctor's appointments go get those vaccinations pray without ceasing uh love on somebody y'all please love somebody today or tomorrow or tell somebody uh give somebody a good word do a good deed for somebody things just happen out of the ordinary when you least expect it and like i said my situation at the doctor's office, that was no great big old deal. However, it was unexpected. And it could have been something. It really could have been something. So, again, pray without ceasing. Now, you know, like I said, I pray all day, every day, all the time. So, pray without ceasing because there's just too, too many things going on. We need to be praying, especially for our children. All these things going on in the school system. Uh, we, we need to, you know, get that corporate prayer going. Thank you a prayer partner. Somebody to pray with uh, over the phone or, or tell them a certain time of the day. Uh, you know, y'all pray like that. Get that prayer going in the atmosphere. I'm, I'm here to tell you, when you least expect it, the most unexpected things can pop up and happen, y'all. I'm telling you. I, um, you know, I had all these other plans. I was going to do all this other stuff today. Cause, like I said, I'm, and now I'm glad that I did go ahead and go shopping. So my other thing is, if you got plans to do stuff, don't put it off. Go ahead and get it done because you never know what's going to happen. Tomorrow is not promised. And plus, time goes by so fast that before you know it, something else is going on. And I'm getting in way. So I thank God that I did go ahead and do my little shopping. Because my appointment was late. I did my little shopping. Today I had, I want, I need floor mats, place mats. Um, 
I bought a new teapot, just little stuff that I wanted to do. And I'm glad now that I went ahead and got it done before I went to the doctor because I had almost stopped to do it afterwards. So don't put, you know how there's a saying, how does it go? Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today because you never know what might get in your way. Just that quick, something can pop up and get right in the way. Sometimes we might not get it done at all or it might be delayed uh, for a long time. And, and I am so heartbroken. Little Norik had his Christmas play tonight, and I'm not able to go to that Christmas play. Because I didn't dare want to go and get there and my arm come alive. I just, and I am heartbroken that I won't be able to uh, see his Christmas play. So hopefully his mom will do a video and she'll share it with us, and we'll see. Uh, Tansy is working, and unfortunately, his dad was, you know, was out of town today. So. None of us were able to, to make it to his um, Christmas play because I had every intention to come back from the doctors, run home, freshen up, and go to his Christmas play. But I did not make it, and I really, really feel so bad that I didn't. So anyway, guys, just like I said, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today when it comes to taking care of your health or a business uh, around your home or things like that. So y'all hang on just a minute. I'm going to let those beans continue to cook. The rice is cooking. Then I'm going to come back and get the fish going. So hold on just a second. Okay, y'all, we're going to get this fish going. Uh, this skillet here is for my uh, shrimp. And then I've got one of my steak irons over here. Ooh, almost picked it up. Not supposed to pick it up like that because it's hot. This is one of my little iron skillet things that I use for my steaks. But I'm going to put this, um, let's do it like this. We're going to switch eyes here right quick because I need to go ahead and get the uh, salmon in the oven. I think I'm going to cook it in the oven, y'all. Let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. There we go. One level. What I've done, I have seasoned my salmon with all my usual seasoning. Those are my nice, two, two nice salmon steaks, skinless salmon. I've got them nice and seasoned up with um, garlic powder, onion powder and my usual uh, everything but the kitchen sink seasoning and put some butter, just slit them a little bit, put butter in between. And what I'm gonna do now is just get them onto these, uh, to this hot um, steak skillet and it's going into the oven. And we'll have this show on the road. These are nice and thick. So, might take a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and put them on just like so. Okay, number one and number two. Okay, that one broke on me. Not to worry, y'all. I'm using this because I need it skillet for something else. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead while they're nice and just sizzling. Like so, I'm gonna go ahead and get them into the oven on high. And I'm putting them right under that broil. Now I'm going to get my uh, skillet back over here for my shrimp. Because I'm going to use this to put my shrimp in as I cook them. Y'all know there's a method to my madness always. Okay. Got that underway. So now what I'm going to do. I've got some nice jumbo shrimp that I have seasoned. And I have put my buttermilk um bath on them okay got them all nice and seasoned and buttermilk bathed up so what i'm going to do let me take that off i'm not going to put them in just right this second what i'm going to do is um go ahead and get my flour bath my dredge this is one cup of flour and a fourth a cup of meal that I put in here for my dredge. So, it's, you know, I'm going to take those out of the little buttermilk bath and they'll go in here and we'll just start cooking them. And, you know, as I said, it does not take that long to cook shrimp. 
Oh wow, that, that salmon is cooking so wonderful. Yeah. That's gonna be some good eating when it comes out of that oven, y'all. Y'all hear me? It's gonna be some good eating now. Oh, it's getting hot in there too. Okay. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. Go ahead and get because that salmon will be done in about <clears throat> five, six minutes, I think. So what I'm going to do is just start putting some of the, uh, shrimp, about half the shrimp in here. Get them dredged up really, really good. And as I, uh, let's see, I don't want the skillet too, too. I need it hot, but not too hot because remember I got the buttermilk on it. Let, and we know anytime we cook anything with milk, it's going to brown real quick. Real quick. So we have to be very, very careful with that. Okay. Okay. Not quite hot enough. I'm just let it heat up a little bit more. It's almost there. I think I want it a little bit hotter than that. There we go. Not bad. I'm just gonna get them. I think I'll get uh have to cook it in two pans. I don't want them to crowd up on each other. I want plenty of room in there so they'll cook and you know they'll crisp up individually is what I'm going for. Okay. I'm using my small wok pan to fry in. Uh, I guess I could have used the regular frying pan, but I decided I was going to use this. I just love this little pan here. It cooks so well, y'all. Okay. I think that's oh, Nope, got one more in there. How about that? It's all, hey, it's always good to have one more. What y'all think? So I'll probably end up with about... Um, Maybe about 20 shrimp. I think 20 is a good number. And of course, we're going to fry these for about 4 or 5 minutes. And they should be done nice and crispy. And i um, going to eat them right along that good old broiled salmon. Okay, y'all, hang on, and I'll be right back. And like I say, with, with this arm situation, yeah, just like I'm saying, just be mindful and tuned in to uh, health issues and things that you have going on with yourself. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's good sometimes to take care of it on the front end versus the back end, which is what I, I was guilty of. So that's why it ended up as bad as it did, because the doctor was really expecting that. Okay, guys, so those shrimp are cooking right nicely. I hope y'all got more done Christmas shopping wise and wrapping than I have because I still got everything that I've purchased. I'm halfway through shopping and none of the way through gear prepping. I heard a lady say while I was out tonight, she said she had all her shopping done and all she had to do was wrap. I thought, what, a, what an accomplishment! I would love to be that person. But you know what? By the end of next week, I'm going to be that person. Because what I like to do is get everything wrapped under the tree all pretty and then just sit around and listen to Christmas music. How's that? I love that. I love that. So I'm working on it, y'all. So y'all hang on and I'll be right back. Oh, these are about ready to come out, y'all. They're about ready to come out. They're golden brown. Um, let's see. I need a paper towel insert here to drain with. Okay, let's get this paper towel going in here. There we go. Oh, yeah, these are ready. You know, I was thinking, um, I don't know how many of you all watch uh, 
The Voice. I love The Voice. I have been watching The Voice ever since the start coming on. And I was just thinking, um, I was thinking about coming home cooking. And I ju it just came to my mind just, just now as I'm sitting here cooking. I thought, you know, um, I'd say sometimes we have to persevere. We have to work through things. Okay, I'm going to put my next load of shrimp in here. Y'all know I will use my hand, and I, and I shouldn't, because if I use this hand to put them in, I got to use the other hand uh, that I'm not supposed to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to sit them down. I'm going to use my tongs. I'm going to use the tongs, y'all. I wanted to use my hand, but then that way I would have had to, uh, like I say, hold the container with the scraps in it. But anyway, as I was thinking, you know, about pushing through, and I'm, I'm, I've always been a push through person. And, you know, sometimes it's good to, sometimes it's not good to, but sometimes, you know, it's the difference between the succeeding and failing. You cannot, cannot give up at the first sign of a little mishap or a little trouble. You got to keep pushing. And I thought about this child on the boys last week, Wendy. Her name is Wendy. When you talk about the same, oh Lord Jesus, that child can say. She said she's been doing it for 30 years. She was on the stage, well, I think it was last week. And I'm just sitting there looking, and everybody was getting ready to walk off the stage after they had performed. And the monitor was sitting on the floor behind her. I took a side of her, I can't remember who it was. But anyway, as she turned to walk off the stage, she turned and tripped right into the monitor. And I saw her when she was doing it. I'm saying to myself, oh my God, when are you going to fall? You're going to fall? You're going to fall? But it was too late. She didn't hear me. Praise the Lord, she fell over that monitor. And I, and I thought, but you know how you see something like that? I thought, now, are they doing some kind of silly prank, which don't make sense? You know, the first thing I said, that don't make sense to do that. And I'm thinking, because it happened so quick and so unexpectedly out of the ordinary, that child felt really did follow that monitor, broke her elbow, and fractured her, broke her left elbow, I think it was, bruised herself up, fractured her right hand. Okay, so she had to come back. Well, thank God it happened at a time where, you know, it wasn't like within that same day that she had to do her performance. Um, that baby girl was back up on that stage. She was singing just like nothing. And you know she had to be in some kind of pain or distress. You broke your elbow and fractured your hand and bruised yourself up and, and got back up. And she was singing just as good, if not better, when she came back. And if they were talking to her, of course, interviewing her after the fall, she said, well, she didn't come all that way to fail. So she said, yep, yeah. you know, it was, it, was, it was an ordeal, but she just worked her way right on through it. And I'm here to tell you, honey, sometimes you got to work your way through what seems to be a failure. You got to tell that failure, no, get up and keep on moving. So for anybody that watches, um, the voice and saw that that uh, show that night. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So y'all, let me know if you saw that. If, if you are a voice person, I love the voice. I love the voice. I love Matt Singer. I love everything. So, but the voice that was just phenomenal. And then uh, let's see, I watched it last night because I always let you know two nights together before I, uh, I before I watch it. So I have a lot to sit down and watch. So. Anyway, she sang, of course, she's in the final five, and honey, if that child did not sing, now I'm looking for her to win the voice, and she doesn't win, I'm going to be real upset. Not just because she failed, but because that girl can sing, so if you, get, if you don't watch The Voice, uh, if you have Hulu, I, I watch it on Hulu, so uh, if you don't have it, then of course you can't watch it, but if you can, and just have never heard about it, or whatever, I don't know how, but watch the voice those uh young men and young women on there they are so talented they sing so well everybody on there this time is and i love of course john legend and um kelly and um john legend kelly ariana grande 
And who's the other person? Oh, my country and western person. I, I can't. Hmm, why can't I call his name? Anyway, he's very popular, very famous, and I love him. I just can't say his name right this minute. But anyway, y'all, please try to watch the voice in this uh, thing where they have to vote, you know, be voted. And you know, one thing about stuff like that, the person that is the best singer doesn't always, 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 always get it. Because it depends on how many people call in. So we are hoping that Willie needs to win this one now. For sure. Because she is the voice. Rizzo's uh, young men and women, they are great. They have great voices. But Wendy is the voice. This child will sing you out of your socks. She she likes to. Of course, she, she does her, oh, Lord Jesus, honey. I know she, she was singing Aretha Franklin's music like, oh, my goodness. And she puts a little bit of her own twist on there. But you can still, but she still respects the music, and I love that she still respects the music enough to leave Aretha, uh, whatever's in there. But honey, that girl Wendy can sing, and she has conquered one of the biggest uh, mountains. She has chopped that mountain down like it was absolutely nothing, y'all. So y'all watch the voice and hopefully vote for Wendy. Or whoever you trust. But I just think it's a great uh, opportunity to go in there and just look at some talented, talented people. Okay, y'all. I'm going to cut out for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. The last of the shrimp are coming out. These are done. Nice and golden brown. Let them drain. Make sure you drain them real good on a paper towel or something like that. And voila. We got golden fried crispy scrimps. Oh, that's two together. I was gonna say that was like even. Okay, so the shrimp are done. So is the salmon. Let's turn that burner off. Okay, and now we're going to switch burners here. Switch burners. Everything right there like so. The green beans are done, of course. My rice is done, y'all. This meal is ready, y'all. Ready, ready, ready. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little bit of a, um, let's get my um, shrimp situated. Okay, I can go ahead and take them off of the paper towel now since they, all the oil has drained onto the paper towel. and put them in our little serving dish here. Y'all see why I moved that sh uh, fish out? That's my new tea kettle, y'all. New tea kettle. Okay, do a little wipe up, clean up there. Dinner is ready, y'all. Let's see if we can get everything into frame where we can see the whole meal. Okay. Um, again, now don't forget to check out um, The Voice. I think it's a great, awesome, wonderful show. Um, this is Mighty Rice. I think I like it. I think I like it, y'all. It, you know why I did feel like it, it's amazing how subliminally things can, can be. Now, I've never cooked basmati rice, to my knowledge. But when I looked at it, I immediately thought about rice pilaf. And so I thought, well, I'm going to treat this like I'm doing some pilaf rice. So it does. It looks very suspect. Uh, okay, y'all, everything is done. It's ready. It's ready to eat that basmati rice. Look, this was the first time for me on that rice. Uh, it turned out really very well. It does sort of remind me of rice pilaf, um, but the taste of it is uh, is a little bit different, kind of almost like jasmine. I get the jasmine rice. It's like a mixture of things, but it's wonderful, and I seasoned it up really good, so that made it even better. Of course, my fried uh, onions and green beans, and I made a little bit of a cream sauce uh, out of the 
um, oil off that fish. I put some, uh, I had a an avocado dressing, uh, a new thing that I, I just squirted some of that in there. I put some uh, more cream, some heavy cream in there, a little bit of lemon pepper in there. And just, you know, just mix it to my taste just to have something to drizzle over that fish and the rice. And, of course, you know, I've got those golden fried jumbo uh, shrimp sitting back there. So we're ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal, y'all. Y'all keep us prayed up. Pray for me, and we will pray for you. Uh, keep those prayers going up. Pray without ceasing. Pray with and for somebody every day, every time that you have the opportunity do something kind for someone. This holiday season is probably more special than any other that we, and I'm 72 years old, as far as things going on, we need to celebrate this season like none other. We need to celebrate this season like it needs to be celebrated because, again, this holiday season, this Christmas season especially, is about the celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we need to celebrate him even the more that he has brought us to where he has brought us through all of these trials and tribulations and all these things that have happened thus far this year. So I just encourage you to continue to pray without ceasing. Keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. And remember, take care of yourself. Pay attention to your body. Go get your uh, shots and your boosters and all those things. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body and it will take care of you. Trust in God for all things. A look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Guys, your help does come from the Lord. So trust in the Lord for all things. Give thanks in all things. And until I decide to cook again, love you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Oh, and don't forget to watch Kareem Howell's channel. That's just what it is. Kareem Howell. And of course, Tanya Howell's channel. Lady T Sensations. The Flavor Train, Tower's Big World of Flavor, all about the banks, y'all. And, of course, our girl, beloved, Miss C's Kitchen, and Miss Prissy P. So watch my girls, support them, help them along the way so that their channel can be the biggest channel of all channels on this YouTube, in this YouTube universe. And of course, my grandson, Kareem, he's just getting started. So y'all support him. Uh, let him know. Give him some love, y'all. And of course, you all, as you're tuned in to my channel, thank y'all for always uh, looking after me and uh, sending me good wishes, uh, gifts, all kinds of love. So thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Love you. And until I decide to cook again, love you guys. Toodles.